Yes. Would you say praying the promises? Praying the promises. Yes. Yes. You're either going to do one or two things in this day and hour. If you will pray the prom, you'll either be praying the promises, and you will be thriving. Or those Christians who choose not to pray the promises, they're going to be struggling to even survive. There's only going to be one or two camps in the body of Christ in this hour. Now, what do you say about the world? Well, the world's on their way to hell. They need Jesus. That's our job. Even though, you know, everybody don't want him. But we will try to get as many people to him that will receive him. Amen. Amen. And, uh, but in the body of Christ, there's going to be two camps. There will be those that get a hold of God's word and put it in your mouth like a bit. There will be those that will just be swallowed up by circumstances. Because I can tell you the trials of life are going to become greater. Yeah. Problems of life are going to become more complex the closer we get to the coming of the Lord. But God always has answers for His own. Amen. He has answers for His children. And so tonight, I'm going to give you some uh, some things, and we may perhaps continue tomorrow night. I don't know. I don't know sometimes from one meeting to the next what we're doing. But what I do know is the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And he's the one that knows. So that's as long as I'm in communication with him, we're all right. right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So, same thing with you. Amen. Amen. So what I want you to do first of all is turn to Second Peter, chapter one. This may be a little different tonight. I may actually speak out some scriptures for you to repeat it because I'm going to show you how to war with the promises. Amen. Amen. How to war with the promises. When, when the devil came to Jesus, when he was in the wilderness, Jesus whipped Satan with one weapon. Now, you know, there are a lot of different things we need to pray in the Spirit. We've taught extensively on praying in tongues. Why you need to be doing it as many hours a day as you can. Worship, we've got, we've taught on that. Gotten into Tehillah praise and how the throne can come in on top of it. But it's interesting that Jesus used one weapon when the devil came at him. And that weapon took care of the job. He spoke God's word with his mouth. Satan came at him three times very real temptations. Jesus came right back at him. It is written, it is written, it is written. And if you are armed with God's word in your mouth, the devil will not be able to hang around your house. He cannot handle that type of food. We will give him Montezuma's revenge. <laughs> and he'll want to get out of your place quick. So, 2 Peter chapter 1 beginning with verse 2. It says grace. Say grace. grace. Grace is God's divine favor. Divine favor and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God. You will never have any greater favor and any greater level of peace in your life than your personal knowledge, not mine, not Pastor Ross, <coughs> your personal knowledge of God. So, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Seeing that His divine power has granted us to us everything pertaining to life and godliness. You see, the power of God is in this place. The power of God, I hope, is in you. And if it's not in you, you can have it tonight. Amen. We've had at least 55 people filled with the Holy Ghost in these meetings speaking in tongues. Amen. 
And if you don't have that and you want it, you can get it tonight because you're going to need it. Somebody said, I'll wait till I get to heaven. You won't need it there. You won't have it there. The Bible says prophecy will cease. That's when it will cease. Tongues will cease. That's when it will cease. When you're in the presence of God the Father and, the, and Jesus, you won't have to have a tongue and somebody interpret it. You understand? You need that language now. You need that power now because you're facing demons now. And all they want to do is kill, steal, and destroy. They want to kill you. They want to steal everything you got. They want to destroy your life. But praying in tongues is a hotline to heaven. The devil does not understand the word you're saying. That's reason enough to be praying in it. Amen. You're praying divine secrets. Amen. Just wanted to say something about that because I feel like maybe there's some people here tonight you did not feel with the Holy Ghost and you need it. I'm not suggesting that you get it. I'm, I'm saying you. it's a necessity if you're going to thrive in this hour. So he says that his divine power has granted to us how many things? All all things. All things that pertain to what? Life. Amen. Say life. Life. And godliness. Through the true knowledge of him who has called us to his own glory and excellence. For by these he has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises. Say precious. Precious. Magnificent, Magnificent. Promises. promises in order that by them you might become partakers of the divine nature. Now, I've studied this Bible most of my life. I love it. I've slept in the Word for I can't tell you for the last several years how many nights that I wait, I've woken up that that's what I've woken up to is God's Word on an iPod or something or another. I just love the Word. And you see, there is only one scripture that I know of in studying the, from Genesis to Revelation where God actually says that a human can partake of the divine nature. And it's this one right here. And I only know of one way that he said it can happen. Now that's powerful stuff. How many of you want to actually partake of God's nature? Yes. Yes. Amen. Let's look at it. For by these, and really don't care what translation, I've got New American Standard right here, I've got New King James over here, but the gist of this should be there. For by these, he has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises in order that by them, by what? Those promises. You might become partakers of the divine nature. Glory to God. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Now somebody said there's a lot of corruption in the world today. Yeah, but uh, God just said here, there's an escape for you. I said, God says there's an escape from corruption. There's corruption on my job. God says there's an escape for you. If you'll do this. If you'll do what? If you'll get a hold of the promises. Amen. These exceedingly great. These exceedingly magnificent. Wonderful. Promises. That you'll become a partaker of God's very nature. Now, let's just let's just look a little bit about God's nature. How's God doing right now? He's doing good. How, how is he doing? He's doing absolutely great. He's doing absolutely great. Is is there any recession where he's at? No. Is there any sickness where he's at? No. Is there any confusion where he's at? No. Absolute peace. Absolute joy. 
Why? Psalm 16:11 tells us that in thy presence is what? Not just joy, but fullness of it. That's a huge difference. Well, so-and-so's got joy. Well, that's great, but how about fullness of joy? Fullness of joy. Say, in your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand is boring. I used to give my kids a hard time about this, but they, they've learned enough now to know what Dad's been talking about. We have oldest son, he's here tonight with a surprise visit with uh, and his wife and uh, Dana and, and our pastors, Josh and Angela. That's what I'm from Hallisville and their children and Dana's son. Amen. I didn't know they were going to be here, but anyway, because see, you know what the buzzword is today amongst young people? <coughs> I'm bored. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, well, just let me see your hand. How many of you hear that? Uh, Look at all the hands. I'm bored. You just told me you don't know God. And I, I would tell them. I have, I can't understand that. Because I have so much going on on the inside of me. 24-7. I'm not bored. How can you be bored? You've got power just rolling on the inside of this body. And God's speaking and giving me instruction. And then I look at a generation growing up, I'm bored. Well, but I go to church. Oh, well, then God's not in that church. Because in the presence of the Lord, not 20 times out of 40, not 20 times, not 30 times out of 40, not 39 out of 40, 40 times out of 40, 100 times out of 100, 1,000 times out of 1,000, when you get in His presence, there will always be fullness of joy, and at his right hand will be pleasures forevermore. As far away from boring as possible. You can, you can have the fastest computer and be bored. If you're into gaming, you can have all of the games and everything that will run them. You can have you can have every piece of equipment that you possibly think you can have. The world's best stereo. I don't care what it is. You're going to become bored because that's not what solves boredom. It's your walk with Him. Oh, hallelujah. I mean, He's just on my body right now strong. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. It's your walk with Him because He's never bored. He's never sick. Amen. You mean, is it possible for me not to get the flu this year? Yes. It's not only possible, but if you'll get a hold of what I'm dealing with tonight, it won't even come in your house. It used to wipe me out. Just like everybody else. And, and I, I'm not telling anybody, if you need a flu shot, get one. I've never had one. And I just don't need. You say, why don't you, why don't you not eat? Because I'm vaccinated. I'm vaccinated. Amen. I go around people that have got it wiped out and everything, and I'm vaccinated. I'm vaccinated. I want to share with you something how to vaccinate yourself tonight. Amen. And I and I I was a preacher. For years and got it and got wiped out for a couple of weeks. I, I know what it means to be laid out in the bed and the whole family wiped out and all that. It doesn't happen anymore. Because I learned how to partake of his nature. 
I said I learned how to partake of his nature. And there's only one way that I know of in Scripture to partake of his nature, and it's through the promises. Say through the promises. Hallelujah. Whoa, glory to God. Now, let, let's look at it closely one more time. For by these he has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises in order that by them you might become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. Now I want you to turn now to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. Now read this in the Amplified. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. Amplified says this, For as many as are the promises of God, you'll say, how many are there? I'm fixing to tell you. Because somebody counted. <laughs> I didn't, but praise God for this brother who counted. Yeah. For as many as are the promises of God, they all find their yes answer in Him, Christ. For this reason, we... We also utter the Amen, so be it, I'm reading down the Amplified, to God through Him in His person and by His agency to the glory of God. So I'm going to read that one more time. There's, a, that, there, there's, there's so much in that one verse. For as many as are the promises of God, they all find their yes answer in Him, Christ. In other words, never a no answer. I like that. How would you like to be able to pray and always get yes? Amen. Amen. I like that. I, me too. Can I see your hand? Anybody, anybody with me tonight? They all find their yes answer in Him, Christ. For this reason we also utter the amen, so be it to God through Him in His person and His agency to the glory of God. You see, all the promises are yes in Christ, but they do not become amen as far as you and I are concerned until we put them to use. I said all the promises of God are already yes in Christ. But they don't become amen to you or amen to me until we get a hold of it. Amen. That's the difference in one Christian dying before their time. Another Christian, I'm saying Christians. Because the, the, world, the world doesn't have a promise of their next breath. But a Christian, let me just stop there a minute. And somebody say, how, how, how can you say that? Because I just know what the Word says. I'm going to let go the Word. I'm not going to let go death. That's why you need that CD. If you weren't here, you need it. Because you may not know what I'm talking about when I say let go. I don't normally just say you need to get that CD. You've got to get that CD. But last night, yeah, you need to get it. It can be a matter of life and death for you to get a hold of what's on that CD. Because you're let going, all right. Where you're at right now is what you've been let going. But you can change that. Amen. I said you can change that. I said you can change that. Y'all help me, what was I just saying before that? That's it, dying before your time. Because see, a Christian, you see, the, 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 the somebody in the world, you won't hear me say to a believer, 
You're not promised your next breath. There's a lot of preachers that will say that. And it preached it to congregation full of Christians. You're not promised your next breath. You're not promised your... For me to say that, I'd be lying. Why? Because of my knowledge. I don't know everything. But what I do know, I would be lying. The scripture is full of... The, the, the word of God is full of promises contrary to that. The end of Psalm 91. How does it end? With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Now you got to be a Psalm 91 Christian. But if you're a Psalm 91 Christian, then yes, you're promised your next breath. Well, what about if Jesus comes? Well, you, you, you don't need your next breath. You get a new body. I said you don't need your next breath. You're going to get a new body that will never die. Yeah. It'll just walk right through that door. The Apostle Paul, let's look a little bit at his life. He had a choice. There was a time in his ministry he said, God says, I can choose right now. That's in Philippians, isn't it? You don't have to turn there because we, we got we're loaded from error with scripture. I mean, I'm just I'm paraphrasing some things for you. He said, It's better for me right now to leave the planet. Because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And he said it would be far better for me to just go on right now. He had already done havoc to Satan's kingdom at that point. Are you listening? He had already, you know, tell how many he already got born again, cast out demons, healed the, you know, healed the sick. Power of God sweeping all over the place. He got to a point in his walk and he said, it'd be better, it would be far better, not just better, for me to just go on right now. But he said, for your sake, I'm not going. He said, I'm not going. He said, for your sake, I need to stay here. He said, what shall I choose? He was in a, he was in between. What shall I choose? See, can I, should I just go on, Lord, now? Or should I stay longer because these Christians need my gift? That's what he was saying. And then when he completely finished his assignment, what did he say? In 2 Timothy, he said, "What I fought a good fight. I kept the faith. I finished my course. Every Christian has a course. That's your assignment. Now, if, you'll, if you will stay in the promises, Pray in the Spirit and, and stay on course while you're here. There's safety in that. You won't die before your time. Amen. I'll tell you with certainty, you will not die before your time. You'll live out the fullness of your days. I said the fullness of your days. The fullness of your days. And there are a lot of people that have known Jesus that did not live out the fullness of their days. All right. You know, what if somebody shows up with a, with a gun?